perfect. What the Holy Father is describing here has already transpired in this world, in the concentration camps of Nazi Germany, where everyone becomes a slave. Everything is regulated. By the way, just as a historical reality, you know, all those cartons you read that the maximum caloric intake of every human being throughout the day should be no more than 2,000 calories, that's fine if you don't need that much. Okay. The caloric intake of the inmates at Auschwitz broke in all of the concentration, 1,700 calories a day. Enough to keep you alive and working, but doesn't give you much energy for anything else. That's a historical fact. Many things that have become commonplace for us have a design and a purpose to destroy us. To do what? Take away our individual freedoms. To freely choose to love God or not. We have to remain free in that choice. But in this peril that Our Lady warned us against, no one is free. You are forced. But the one thing that is not understood, you can't force a Christian to deny Christ. You can put him in concentration camps. You can try to make the world a concentration camp. But even there, he can worship his good God. Does not the life of St. Maximilian Mary Colby, Blessed Titus Bradsman, and St. Edith Stein prove to us this? Finally, the right of education is denied to parents, for it is conceived as the exclusive prerogative of the community, in whose name and by whose mandate alone parents may exercise this right. Or as one of our modern leaders has told us, it takes the village to raise the child. No, it takes God. It takes God in His grace. Now, all of this is fine. I think every human being, even the enemies, could see the intrinsic logic in the Holy Father's, Father's analysis of the situation. Why is it then the majority of mankind seems to ignore it and not follow it. Because it is not the intellect by which they are corrupting us. That's what Our Lady came to tell us. It is by the affections. So how do you inculcate this false doctrine into the hearts of man? I ask you to listen to the words of one of the most popular songs in our modern culture and ask the question, has not everything the Holy Father described to us as antithetical to authentic family living incorporated into this in a way that almost makes you want to do it? Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us, only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there's no countries, it isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for, and no religion too. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us, and the world will be as one. Imagine no possessions, I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger. A brotherhood of man. Oh yes, let's always invoke the brotherhood of man. Sounds nice, but it only becomes oppression when God is not invited in. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. Christians should only imagine the people sharing life of eternity with God in heaven. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. And in chorus, every member of the mystical body should stand up and shout, no thank you. That's how they do it. By appealing to the affections. And then once you're worn down, that is, no longer using your intellect, but just your feelings and emotions, the Pied Piper comes. Oh, and by the way, he's calling you to join him. Remember, there are two paths you can go by. 
But in the long run, your stairway lies on the road you're on. Don't be alarmed now if there's a bustle in your head. There's still time to change the road you're on. There's still time to change. Don't worry. That's called the sin of presumption. That's how they do it. It's not the intellectual formulation. It's the formulation that weeds its way into our hearts that we have got to guard against. And then the Vicar of Christ gives the answer at the end of his letter. And see if this doesn't conform precisely with what transpired at Fatima on the final day when that most blessed man whoever graced this planet protected the Holy Family, St. Joseph by name, to hasten the advent of that peace of Christ in the kingdom of Christ so ardently desired by all we placed the vast campaign of the church against world communism under the standard of Saint Joseph because he delivered the Holy Family from all this type of philosophy. Her mighty protector, he belongs to the working class and he bore the burdens of poverty for himself and the Holy Family whose tender and vigilant head he was. To him was entrusted the divine child when Herod loosened his assassins against him. And that is precisely what did our Lord say? What they have done to me, they will do to you. These are Herod's assassins that destroy human life. They are nothing but Herod's assassins who was Satan's assassin. That's all that's being done. It's really not complicated. In a life of faithful performance of everyday duties, nothing extraordinary. That's not what the Mother of God asked at Fatima. She simply said, the faithful exercises of daily duties done in reparation for all the sins of the world. But many people faithfully do their duties each and every day. But not many of them are incorporated into the mystical body of Christ. And by that very fact, our actions are elevated, all of them. That's why we have to guard them, to try our best to be certain they're in accord with the will of God and His Most Holy Mother. He left an example for all those who must gain their bread He was basically referring to gain their bread by the sweat of their brows by the toil of their hands. He won for himself the title of the just. Serving thus as a living model of that Christian justice which should reign in the social life. With eyes lifted on high, our faith sees the new heavens and the new earth described by our first predecessor, St. Peter. While the promise of false prophets on this earth melt away in blood and tears, the great apocalyptic prophecy of the Redeemer shines forth in heavenly splendor. Behold, I make all things new. And that is what Our Lady came. Trust my son, do whatever he tells you, and he will make all things new. And so, let us truly persevere in what Our Lady asked us to do at Fatima because she has asked us to allow her to use us in order to crush the head of that ancient serpent wherever he assails the human family so that Christ reigns and peace comes in this life in order that we may all enjoy it forever in the life to come.